Hello, hello, hello. We're going to get started in about a minute here. And that's it. The minute has passed. Um, so we're going to bring to the stage Monty Taylor. He's one of the founding fathers of OpenStack. Um, he used to be at Rackspace. He's now at HP. And he has an interesting background in lighting design. Um, so he probably had a hand in setting this up. So I'll bring him to the stage now. Let's welcome Monty. Hey everybody! Thanks for uh, showing up. And yeah, I totally, I totally hung all these lights right before the the event. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, collaboratively managing the OpenStack project with Puppet, which is entirely too long of a uh, talk title. I apologize for that. Uh, next time I'll just remove the articles, and maybe that'll make it uh, a little bit more acceptable. Um, so in case uh, in case you don't know me, which is uh, inconceivable to me because I'm a raging narcissist. Um, I, uh, I will point out that I, like, he, like Kelsey said, I, uh, I was around back when we put this thing together. Uh, it makes it sound like I had a lot more to do with that than I did, but I'll take credit for it anyway. Um, uh, I basically run and work on the core team of people who run the uh, continuous integration and developer automation systems for the OpenStack project. Um, at this point, most of my contributions are doing things that the rest of them yell at me for, but, um, but I'm going to talk to you about that today anyway. Um, I also sit on the foundation board, which is once I started sitting on that uh, is the point where I stopped being able to do anything technical. Um, and the rest of the people on the team uh, hate me now. Um, run the technical, I'm on the technical committee and also apparently HP pays my salary to do things. Um, so that's, that's pretty exciting. Um, and and uh, they've been really supportive of everything all, as far as this goes. Um, so uh, just to be clear, uh, this is going to be about how we use uh, Puppet to run the CI and developer automation systems uh, that OpenStack uses. This is not a talk about installing OpenStack. I believe there's at least 75 other talks uh, here at the conference uh, that are about uh, interfacing with OpenStack itself and Puppet, but that is not by any uh, stretch of the imagination uh, what we're going to be talking about here, uh, as I've never done that. Um, uh, we're going to chat a little bit about uh, challenges that we've faced, because uh, as an open source project, uh, every single bit of things that we do, we do in the open, um, which is problematic when you're running uh, production systems. Um, <laughs> passwords, apparently, um, get, get tricky. Um, and it's possible, just as a warning, uh, that I might rant about some things, uh, and I might uh, swear or uh, otherwise violate various uh, codes of conduct that I've probably signed. Um, so hopefully nobody will tackle me on stage and, and bustle me out, but you know. If it happens, it happens. So, um, so as I said just a couple seconds ago, we have a few design assumptions um, in the OpenStack uh, CI system. And that is that everything that we do should be open. Uh, we don't want any, we want as, as little secret information as we can. We want as few things to not be accessible to our entire community as, as we can. Um, and also because we're doing this, um, even though this is just the stuff that's supporting uh, the support systems for the, for the project, we really don't like writing stuff that isn't reusable by other people. Um, so we'd like to be able to reuse other people's work, or we'd like to be able to make our work reusable um, by other people. Um, and, and it turns out that uh, uh, other than just the, the tasks of managing some systems, um, once you toss those two uh, things in as sort of core tenets of what you're trying to accomplish, um, things, things get uh, harder to the point where you sometimes you decide to just give up and uh, go run something for Microsoft. Um, OK, that's never happened. Um, uh, also, I'd like to put in a shameless plug. I'm hiring. Um, so uh, in case you haven't heard of OpenStack, um, OpenStack is some open source software that we've been writing uh, for building uh, both private and public clouds. Um, you can check it out at OpenStack.org. Um, and it's comprised of uh, a whole bunch of different projects. Um, uh, I think this actually scrolls off the screen, possibly. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a federation of, um, of open source projects. Um, and, uh, and so managing them um, at the moment involves the work of several, uh, several of us. Um, at the time that we started the project, however, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I skipped a slide in my brain. You'd think I might have memorized these, but you'd be wrong. Um, we also have a lot of servers that, that it takes to manage the OpenStack project itself. Um, this is a view of our, um, of our Puppet Master at the moment. Uh, and a couple of these in here are actually lying to you. Um, a couple of the entries in here actually represent about 40 servers. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but so we, we have a lot of servers and we have a lot of, a lot of things. 
Um, it, it, didn't, it, didn't, it wasn't always that way. Um, so when we first started, uh, this is the, the entire list of, of things. We had two projects, um, one of which was pretty much done and one of which really didn't work at all. Um, and uh, we had a Jenkins server. Uh, and then some other guy had, um, had set up a wiki server uh, and a place that we stuck some documentation. And I didn't really even have anything to do with that. Um, so, so we had, to, we had to, to manage the code contributions for, for two projects and, I don't know, 20, 30 developers. Um, I knew all of them by name. Um, and, uh, and I had by hand spun up a single server and just installed Jenkins on it by hand and, you know, created some user accounts on it, you know, your standard things that you do. And then I actually sort of forgot about it. Like, I had other things on my plate because it turns out that running a single Jenkins server is one of the easiest things in the world to do. Um, pretty much you install it and it runs. Um, so there wasn't really much care in feeding um, at first, which meant that I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about how I might manage that in the large or uh, in a repeatable way um, moving forward, um, which, was, which was a whole lot of fun uh, and, and gave us uh, hives later on in our lives. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so Jenkins had, had one admin. We did have other resources. Um, we had the wiki, which managed by somebody else. I realized that uh, after I wrote these, uh, there was another server that somebody had wrote, written or that had spun up that had IRC bot and like did IRC channel logging. Um, and they run, ran those and didn't even tell me about them and you know, things like that. Um, and everything was installed by hand by various different people. On the machines that weren't managed by me, there were just like, like 20, 30 people who had root access in the box and they would just like shell in and just do things. And then like, you know, one day somebody would be like, hey, the wiki's down. And you'd be like, I, I don't even know how to log into the wiki. Um, it was, uh, it, was, it was a lovely time, and uh, I, I really enjoyed every second of our, of our, early, of our early days. Um, but it's fine, too, because there's like 20 of you. So if the wiki goes down for a half an hour, who cares? Um, I mean, probably somebody, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, over time, however, uh, on, and I'm going to talk about this on my system, the system that somebody else set up that they just gave root access to everybody, uh, that's just evil, and you should, I mean, it's just a bad idea. But um, I, mean, I, can't, I can't really speak for what was going on in his drug-addled brain, so um, I'm not going really to focus on that. But in my systems, the one that I was running, um, I had some more people in the project that had to start doing things, and I was still only sort of doing this uh, half-time at the time. So, um, so we added a few more people um, to, the, to the system uh, that, that needed to, to be able to do things on the Jenkins server, because we literally had one, and we ran all of the jobs on the Jenkins server. If you know anything about Jenkins, that's actually how it's designed. The slaves uh, situation is a hack. Um, there is actually no real slave design. It's, it's a really sort of an ex post facto uh, sort of crazy code hack if you look in how it's done. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, then we, we got to the point where we need to start adding build saves because the different projects had different build dependencies and you can't entirely install different versions of C libraries. Anyway, blah, blah. Um, so things started to get annoying is basically, uh, is basically how, how things got better. Um, how they often get better is you get really annoyed um, at things. Uh, because what was happening is as I was starting to, to add things, um, I think this is the, nope, sorry. Uh, I, there should be one more bullet point. The thing that I got annoyed with at this point really wasn't all that complex of a problem. But if I had to spin up a new build slave or whatever, I, had to, I was at that point in time going to a cloud control panel and creating a machine and then it would pop up, uh, because this, I was using Rackspace, so it would pop up in a little pop-up window, the root password. I would then have to, with password, log into machine and change the root password, and then start adding user accounts by hand. And that's not hard, but it sure is boring um, and, and annoying and tedious. Um, and so that was the first thing that, uh, that I really sort of needed to fix in my life so that I could basically not spend any time doing that. Um, so, so then I went to um, the, I had at this point in my life never used Chef or Puppet uh, or CF Engine or, uh, well, Juju didn't exist at the time, although I believe some people were working on a project called Ensemble. Um, and then later on they decided to name it Juju, uh, which is the lamest thing that's ever happened in life. But, um, I mean, <laughs> just, come on, guys. Um, I want to write Juju charms. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Um, all right. Shuttleworth hates me anyway. It's fine. Um, so, so I, I, but basically, I, at that point the, in time, I wanted to manage users and some dependency packages. So I looked into the two obvious choices, which were Chef and Puppet. And um, when I was writing this, uh, I was going to say, I, I looked at them, and I just picked one. 
Um, turns out that's not true, as I realized as I was walking over here and I was thinking through talk slides. Uh, and I remembered why I picked Puppet over Chef, and it's actually sort of a weird reason. Um, at the time, the OpenStack project was using BZR for all of its version control uh, needs, and I was using that for all of my projects, and uh, Chef's really tied to Git. Um, and so I went and tried to create a Chef cookbook, and it like created me a Git repo, and I was like, I don't want to use that, and so I just deleted it. Uh, and I went over to Puppet, which let me do things the way I wanted to do them. Um, so thanks uh, for that. Uh, that, was, um, that was really handy. Um, probably wouldn't have uh, quite angered me the same way today, uh, given that all of the rest of the version control systems that aren't Git at this point are pretty much uh, dead ends. Um, uh, also, to continue my line of picking on Juju, which seems like what I'm going to do this morning, uh, they're really sort of tied to bizarre at the moment, which makes it even more bizarre uh, in their world. So, um, I mean, not, anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to manage some users and packages. So, I started playing with Puppet. I'd also like to point out that I could, Chef was wanting me to install some server thing, and uh, Puppet has this great command called apply, uh, which is great when you're just trying to, like, try out a really simple operation, and you don't want to set up an entire infrastructure to manage the four users that you've got on a machine. Um, so, uh, in, in terms of being able to ramp that up, it was really fantastic. Because um, I had a small infrastructure. I only had a few machines. I was really just trying to be lazy. Um, so, Puppet Apply was, uh, was a really big win for me um, and, and allowed me to really easy, sort of easily like, play with some really small manifest files at first and just sort of do some things. Um, uh, in the first rant of the day, creating users, however, the main thing I wanted to do, not so much of a win. Um, why in the bloody existence of life is creating a proper user on a machine with Puppet the hardest thing known to man. I want to do something really straightforward. I want a user account, and I probably want to put an SSH key in the person's SSH directory. Probably the only thing I want to use creating users for. And um, so this is part of our, our user class that we use to create a user. You've got a user resource there, thank you, and a group resource. Good that we've got some built-ins. Um, but then I've, I've got to create this SSH directory, even that's a pretty standard thing to do. Um, and it continues on to the next page. Uh, I've also then got to get the, author, the, the SSH keys in there. But because of the way that resources are allocated, uh, that's, a, that's, a virtual, that's done as a virtual resource, uh, if you see up there. Um, so then I've got to, I've got to define some virtual um, users. In this case, there's the definition of me. And then on the machines I'm going to use it on, I've got to realize that user. Just as a suggestion, oh, I'm hiring. Um, uh, oh, and, and the suggestion is on a different page. <laughs> um, just as a suggestion, uh, while I'm hiring, uh, maybe, maybe creating a user uh, should be like a thing that, you know, that a, a configuration management system knows how to do properly. Um, just looking at you down there through the lights. Um, uh, Anyway, it, that would be really great, and it would really make my life, um, well, at this point, it won't my life, make my life easier. I already wrote that class. Actually, I didn't write that class. Jim Blair wrote that class. Um, I had a, do I still have it on here? I, I solved this problem in a very weird way, um, because I don't like typing, and I didn't really have my head wrapped around the virtual uh, thing. So I actually wrote a Launchpad API script to go pull all the information out of Launchpad and just generate a big, splatting, uh, repeated amount of, of Puppet code. Uh, uh, that I that I then stuck into the into the puppet uh, into my into my puppet repository. Um, so um, this isn't the right way to do that, by the way. Um, you you probably if you're you're probably if you're probably writing Python scripts that that generate <laughs> puppet manifests, you you probably designed something wrong. Um, uh, just just as a word of the wise. Uh, but however, at this point, even though that was wrong and it was just a just a big pile of fail. Um, it was so much easier, because all I had to do to launch a node now was launch the node and then run like a script, and then I had all of my users, and it was like revelation. Like I was like, oh my god, this is the best thing that I've ever done. And then you know, I, as you do, once you've got that, and you start adding in, oh, I'm going to have a list of packages that I'm going to install on this node, and I'm going to, you know, and that's great. Uh, it's fantastic. It was still, I don't even think it was checked into version control anywhere. It was just like a directory, I think, that I tarred up and splatted over somewhere. But it was, it was much better than before, uh, and, and it made me happy. Um, so, um, so the, the first, sort of the first, uh, our first usage pattern of, of Puppet in the OpenStack CI project um, was to run Puppet Apply by hand uh, after having created a machine. Um, the problem, as I'm sure everyone in this room can tell, is that that's totally manual operation. It isn't really that much of a win uh, compared to what I was doing before. Um, it's good, but it's, it's not great. 
Um, so I had that, and then uh, Jim Blair started working on the project, uh, which is really when things started getting good. Um, and he walked in and looked at my launchpad script that generated puppet code and told me I was a complete and utter raving moron um, and, uh, and promptly fixed that. Uh, and then we started actually doing things like creating classes and modules because um, it, it turns out you can do that in, in puppet. You don't have to just write one big file. Um, I'm really not making myself sound very good here today. Um, anyway, so, so that was really good. Um, so very quickly, <laughs> we got to a, uh, a different usage pattern. Uh, there's a bit of the story here that isn't really related to Puppet, but where the entire OpenStack project shift, shifted from uh, BZR to Git. Um, so in, in usage pattern number one, uh, we stuck all of our manifests and modules into an actual <laughs> public uh, Git repo. Um, and then we, then we got the brilliant idea of actually running Puppet applying cron rather than just shelling into the machine and running it by hand. Um, this, is, this is where we learned technology from 40 years ago. Um, it's, it's really good. Um, but uh, also to go back all the way back to the, one of the first slides when I mentioned that um, uh, we want to make things reusable and we want to make things accessible to the developers in our organization, one of the other things that we got by sticking all of this in a public Git repo is that in the theory went um, is now anybody that's associated with the project can come in and help us manage the machines because all they've got to do is uh, you know, change some code and, and send us a, a code review. Um, in practice, that happens less than you might think, but you know, it's there. Anyway, the problem with this, even though it's so much better than usage pattern zero, um, is now, now we're at the point of where do you stick your secret stuff? Because it turns out I've got some SSH keys that one machine needs to use to talk to another machine. I've got a database password that's got to go somewhere. Um, and if I've got a public Git repo that anybody in the project can use uh, to help us manage the machines, uh, well, I can't darn well very well put uh, all of those passwords into that public Git repository because then they'd just be able to log into the machines and it would be, well, they call that a security breach. Um, and uh, and it's, it's neat and all, uh, but then, then you do things like uh, have people inject code into the repos, sort of like what happened to kernel.org. Um, uh, and then, then you're offline for a couple of months while you figure out how to get a new Git repo up. Um, and we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to be kernel.org. I mean, we do want to be kernel.org because everybody wants to be Linus, but um, we didn't want to be that version of kernel.org. Um, so, um, so that became sort of the next driving uh, facet of, uh, of solving, um, solving problems for us. So um, secret solution zero. The, thing, the first thing that we did uh, to solve where do we stick secret files is um, that we copied them to a location on the machine by hand when we created the machine, and then we referenced that location in, the, in, in, our, in our puppet manifests. Um, so you, you, can, you can see right here, uh, we've, we've got a lovely uh, source of, of this INI file um, that's in a slash root slash secret files. Um, so, uh, I mean, this works. Uh, this allows us to not put the secret information into the public Git repo. Um, uh, it did have the downside of needing to keep those files A somewhere and then B, copy them by hand onto the machine before you ran Puppet and then ran Puppet. So it's, you know, it's, it's a solution. Um, it's not great. There's another problem with that too. And um, so yeah, it, this, this is pretty much, I mean, nothing is good about this actually. It's, it's a terrible solution. Please, nobody watching at home think, oh god, that solves my problem. I'm, gonna, I'm totally just gonna, I can just copy files onto the, onto the machine by hand and then tell Puppet where they are. It's, it's terrible. Um, and amongst the main reasons are is that it sort of defeats reusability, because now I've got, I've got this, which is referencing a file which isn't on your system, and you sort of have to know something about it. So if you want to reuse this element of this Puppet module, you're in another area. Um, well, all of a sudden now there's this extra bit of secret knowledge you've got to have of how to set up your system before you can use Puppet to set up your system. Um, and and that's, that's really not great for reusability. Um, the other problem, this is actually was my big beef with it, um, is that the entire file becomes secret. Um, this, is, this, is a, this is an INI file. Um, in that INI file, there is a line um, which has the password, the, the password line. But the whole file here is in um, is, is in a secret thing. So if you're trying to read the module to figure out what it is that we're doing, um, you're, you're missing some information. Um, uh, and that's, that's pretty terrible uh, and, and upset me. 
uh, and I might have run around throwing things. Um, I mean, that might have just been because of being drunk. But um, anyway, uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really too pleased about that. Um, this is just a rant that has nothing to do with that. Um, but, uh, and this is, this is I'd, I'd like to point out that um, it really annoys me that it's so hard to install packages appropriately in modules. Um, imagine, if you will, that you have two different classes. Each one of them indicates that it needs the package uh, Python YAML. True story, both of those packages in the OpenStack CI system, they require Python YAML. It's just a single package. You could make a class that installs Python YAML, but that's a little bit ridiculous. Um, because then if you include both of those classes in Jenkins.OpenStack.org, uh, you're going to get a conflict error telling you that, uh, that the same resource has been uh, defined twice. Um, so what we had to do in both of those modules is we had to replace that with this. Um, so we check if package YAML is not defined, then define that we want package YAML installed as part of this resource. Um, you have to do that with every single package that you're going to install. Um, because you sort of have to if you want somebody to be able to use this module in addition to some other module on, on, a, on a machine they're installing. Um, that's, that's kind of annoying. Yeah? Great. Standard lib. Why isn't it in standard, pipe, uh, standard puppet? Uh, oh, right. Yeah. So um, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just like to point out that possibly installing packages might be one of the fundamental things you might want to do with puppet. Uh, and that possibly it should know that installing packages should be an item potent operation, um, that anything that's requesting a package probably isn't conflicting with anything else that's requesting a package, uh, and it should probably just create a set of what the, the actual package dependency graph you're requesting is so that you don't have to do like crazy things. Um, just, just a suggestion, just putting it out there for maybe Puppet version 4 um, that, that maybe, maybe you should make installing packages like fundamental to the system. Um, I don't know. It's just I'm crazy sometimes, so ignore me if you want to. Um, or I don't know, take the thing from standard lib and make it part of the standard puppet. Um, anyway, uh, I'd also like to point out that I'm hiring. Um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, so so we've got the we've got the problem with the with the secret files. We've solved it in the terrible way. Um, but but then we're getting more and more machines. We've got some scripts to to load them up. Uh, at this point, we've got five or six servers. I don't remember how many. Uh, we've got 10 static Jenkins build slaves that, that are all managed by Puppet. Um, and we've also gotten to this really interesting point where, um, uh, for those of you that are following OpenStack at all, um, there's this thing called DevStack, which you can use to install uh, OpenStack on a single machine, um, which is great and is what we used for starting to do integration testing. Um, it does sort of take over the entire machine and is not really leave it in a state that you can reuse that box for. So in order to do that, we have to spin up a brand new machine uh, every time we want to run a test, and then run it, and then delete the machine, which means that we're spinning up and tearing down machines um, somewhere on the order of two to 300 machines a day. Um, uh, and this is obviously, we wouldn't really have been able to do this effectively if we hadn't been using Puppet in the first place. Um, but uh, but we're, we're starting to do a lot of work now. <laughs> we're starting to do, we're starting to run things on machines frequently, let's say. Um, so, so we were at that point, and also around this time, uh, we were at, I think, LinuxConf Australia last year, and uh, started chatting with uh, the fine folks, uh, Ryan Lane and uh, Rowan at Wikimedia, uh, about uh, the fact that they were doing a lot of the same things we were doing, uh, and maybe we should chat about, um, about doing some more things in collaboration, which goes back to one of those original bullet points I was talking about, about being able to like share work, amazingly enough. Um, and so now there's actually somebody who wanted to share work with us, which is neat, because before it was just a theory. Um, like, we're like, oh, we should do extra work to make sure that people can share our work, but nobody wanted to. Um, so it was sort of wasted work. So it was very exciting when somebody wanted to actually, you know, uh, make some of that work worthwhile. Um, but, but then you get to the realization that you haven't actually gone all the way, and because you're copying secret files around, your work isn't actually repeatable, um, and people can't really use it effectively. Um, so, um, so then, but we just sat there in pain for a while because we, we didn't really have a lot of bandwidth to deal with it. Uh, and then luckily I bumped into Dan at, uh, at OSCON uh, this past summer. If you don't know Dan, he's fantastic. Um, and also today apparently is the day we're giving him shout outs. So shout out to Dan. Um, uh, and we started talking about, uh, about using Hira, um, or Hira, Hira, it would not matter. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail about uh, Hira because I did notice that there are at least 700 talks on, on using Puppet Master and Hira. Uh, here at the conference, so um, you can probably get more details from that. Um, but uh, but so the 
the sort of the sort of new usage pattern that we decided to go into was to uh, reorganize a lot of our classes so that any secret information they needed were passed in as parameters. This is sort of a standard best practice. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, um, you you should. It's the right thing. And oh no, my phone's ringing. That's very rude of me. Um, uh, and then we and then with a with a puppet master and a Hira database installed, um, we could then put just the secret. So that thing that annoyed me before about having the entire file uh, stuck into the uh, stuck into the secret area uh, gets solved. Uh, as I'll change in a second, um, and then all of our all of our croning and pulling and stuff like that uh, effectively winds up uh, happening in terms of interacting with our database or our repos happens on the master rather than having uh, 150 slaves uh, all doing a pull from some re uh, repo somewhere, um, which was great. We also started using forge modules around this point in time, um, which uh, we'll bring up a rant in a second, um, and uh, and but but once you start using um, uh, uh, puppet agent and puppet masters, then the thing that was great about before, when we were running things in cron, even though that was a little bit weird, um, cron is really great about sending you email when, when stuff messes up. Um, and uh, uh, the, the just running things in, like there's great log files in puppet master, but I don't notice them, and so things would fail and I wouldn't see it. So we installed uh, puppet dashboard um, to, uh, to actually be able to tell uh, what had gone on with all of our bazillion machines. Um, so the thing that was great about the about the uh, the model of having parameterized classes and then passing in secret information is now I can have in my in my top level manifest um, I can have an entry like for this is the actual entry for uh, wiki.openstack.org um, it uh, it's the node wiki.openstack.org ooh ex exciting uh, and it it has basically just the class um, for our wiki and it passes in uh, the the two pieces of higher information. Done. That's the entire description of what happens on our wiki. Um, all of the rest of it is in is in completely completely sealed and reusable modules. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so this is great. Also, just in case you're actually reading uh, that slide, um, I, just as a as a minor thing, obviously the MySQL root password is a thing that you want in your secret passwords database. Um, we've discovered that since people do actually, oddly enough, reuse some of our puppet modules, um, that putting in the email addresses of our sysadmins. Um, that get that get splatted into to things like uh, root aliases is a terrible thing to actually put in a module that somebody else is going to install in their system because then you get their root cron mail. Um, <laughs> so uh, so we we quickly discovered that that our list of sysadmins uh, it's secret. Um, it's in a secret thing. Uh, you can't know what it is. Um, so uh, so we uh, so we did that. Uh, we started using the the forge, um, which was fantastic because there's other people's modules there, because this is the idea, right? It's like, when we get back to the whole reusability idea, I'd like to reuse my Puppet modules. Um, so look, there's this great place with reusable modules of Puppet. Neat. Um, uh, and so we started using that. Um, so the thing with that, though, is that as much as I love it, uh, it would be really great is if it didn't suck so bad to install modules from Puppet Forge. Um, uh, this is actually the script that we use right now to install the six puppet modules um, on, a, on a machine that might need them. Um, and we have to do all of this stuff in the for loop down here um, so that we can basically declare that we would like the module to exist. And we don't care if it's already installed. Um, we're just requesting it. Hey, I'd like version 0.0.4 of OpenStack CI dashboard. Um, oh, you've already got it? Guess what? That's not an error. Um, that's, that's, that's great. It's installed. Thank you. Um, so again, maybe. Maybe if we could make this an item potent operation, that would be fantastic. Um, also, uh, if you just if you just clone uh, a, a source code repo from Git into your into your modules tree, uh, puppet module list doesn't isn't really able to figure out that you've got that module installed. Uh, so maybe that should work. Maybe you should be able to pull a source tree that's got a module in it, and you should be able to run puppet module install on that directory and have that installed into your into your modules tree. Just just a couple of suggestions of how uh, the module command might be made. Uh, it's better. However, it's still better than not having the puppet module command. So thank you for writing it, whoever wrote it. Um, but also, you should fix these things because they're annoying me. Um, also, I'm hiring, um, in case you didn't notice that from before. Um, <coughs> uh, so like I said, we started using Dashboard, uh, which is great. In fact, you saw in a very early slide a little uh, snippet of a screenshot of our, of our current uh, view of that. Uh, this is actually our, our um, uh, uh, our thing from our manifest installing it. We're using 
Well, we're using a fork of the Puppet Labs uh, dashboard uh, Puppet module because the Puppet Labs dashboard module doesn't work, but also I can't send a pull request to it because it's also diverged from the time. So the one that was released works. Anyway, I'll get that sorted out. Mine works great. Um, I would love to upstream those changes when I, I'm not lazy, it's my fault. Um, uh, but anyway, basically that just it installs, it does all of the things you want it to do and they're fantastic. Um, with a couple of caveats there, um, you can actually go to puppet dashboard.openstack.org colon 3000 and check out everything we're doing in Puppet with the exception of I think slash hope, I don't think it's showing our secret information appropriately. Um, if it is, well, ah uh, well. Um, uh, I would I would like to request that SSL support for dashboard in terms of being able to, to push reports up to the dashboard worked uh, appropriately. Now that'd be neat. Uh, I mean, pretty much everything should just support SSL out of the box. Just pointing out. Um, but I'd like for you if you look at that if you look at that dashboard and I could go all the way back to the front where you saw it. You'll see two entries. One is for oniric.slave.openstack.org and one is for precise.slave.openstack.org. Um, I think I have a yeah. So. Uh, I might have mentioned that we create and destroy hundreds of slaves a day, um, and that works really well, other than the fact that I don't really want to indicate the information about them specifically, and I don't want to make new certs for them and then have to um, approve those certs as they're created. Um, but I do want all the rest of my useful machines to, to do that, so I don't really want to do auto cert signing. Um, so the thing that we're doing there is we're actually just, uh, we have a cert for any host whose host name is uh, oniric.slave.openstack.org, and we just tell all of the Oniric slaves that we start up that that's their host name, uh, and then we just splat the cert on. So we have 100 different slaves all connecting into Puppet Master, all saying that they are the same machine. Um, works fine, other than the fact that Puppet Master gets, or the Puppet Dashboard gets sort of confused by that, and we get thousands and thousands of warnings. Um, but it's fine, it, it works. Uh, it's actually working really well. Um, so uh, of, the, of the bad ideas that I've got that I suggest to other people, this one actually can solve some set of problems. Um, anyway, so that's great, and also I tend to babble, so I'm starting to run out of time. Um, so where are we going with all of that? We've got sort of a, now a reasonably bog standard. We use Puppet Master, and we have a Hira database, which seems to be the normal pattern, so much so that Hira is being incorporated into the next version of Puppet directly, which will allow us to remove at least four words out of our manifest, um, which is neat, because I like deleting uh, characters. Um, but that's fantastic. Uh, we, we have a bunch of, we've, we've done modular programming. We have modules everywhere. Uh, none of them have any kind of unit testing at all. Um, so that's, that's sort of failure. Um, we want to fix that. That's, that's a thing that we need to get done. And, and luckily, we've actually had a couple guys um, uh, pop into the channel recently. Uh, a guy, Paul Ballinger, uh, just popped in recently and, uh, and started popping in with, hey, I've got this module and it's got unit testing. Why don't we use mine instead of yours? And we're like, that's a great idea. Um, so, uh, so we've started sharing some work there. Um, however, that's all well and good, but one of the things that we actually, we have a bunch of machine, we have a bunch of services that have to work together and, and services that have to work with APIs of other services. So what's more interesting to us, especially since we already spin up nodes to run, install OpenStack on them and run tests, is maybe we use some of that same framework and spin up entire fresh new nodes and then run uh, our puppet manifests on them to actually install our, a copy of our resources onto that. Um, and because we have, I mean, 13 isn't that many, but I'm already sort of abusing my free cloud accounts from HP and Rackspace. Um, uh, the thought, one of our thoughts there is to actually make a single manifest um, uh, for a node that just installs all of our classes on the same machine. And, um, uh, and that way, we'll get a machine that runs Jenkins and Garrett and the Puppet dashboard and the wiki and the Etherpad and the everything like that else. But those really shouldn't conflict. And actually, there's a couple places where I think their classes will conflict. So um, I think that'll be a fun exercise to do. Um, figuring out how to test that works is a thing I haven't figured out yet. But I've got people that can figure that out. Also, I'm hiring. Um, so if you think it would be fun to come figure that out, then you know, just come find me. Um, but, but in that way, we can start doing uh, per commit pre-merge uh, testing of, uh, of all of our modules and make sure that they actually functionally work. Um, if you'd like to dig in a little bit more to, um, uh, to some of these things, uh, all of our puppet modules, uh, all of our, our, our main puppet repo is on GitHub in the OpenStack org and the OpenStack CI puppet um, uh, repo. Uh, there are a few additional um, uh, repos for things that we've actually pushed to the forge. Um, we've got documentation for all of our systems there. 
We're on Freenode all the time. It's where we work. Um, we've got a mailing list for all of this type of stuff. It's great. Also, I'm hiring, um, in case you hadn't noticed that before. Uh, and that is uh, pretty much what I got. Um, this, this talk is also online at GitHub, uh, openstack-ci slash publications, and it's all in lovely HTML, so you can fork it if you want to um, and, uh, and hack on it like that. Uh, and I think that's close to time for me. Yes, that is time, in fact. Thank you. Should I wait until we? Yeah, so we have a few minutes for oh, great. a couple of questions. So Excellent. we can take about five minutes of questions. If you're destined to a new talk, you have about 10 minutes to get there. Um, so we'll awesome. take five more minutes for questions. Questions? Anybody have any questions? No, there are no questions. I'm perfectly clear. Uh oh, oh, this isn't going to be a good question. I have maybe more of a. Did you ever find a Puppet Librarian? Have you had a look at that? No. One of What's the things Puppet you librarian? mentioned was your. This is script. why I love dump running into Dan at conferences, by the way. So your script for downloading and doing versioning stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Sharp, if he's in here by any chance from GitHub actually wrote something called Puppet Librarian. Great. And it does exactly this, and it has a YAML file where you can specify um, either GitHub repositories or modules from the forge and versions or, or branches. Score. Hey, uh, Clark, if you're watching at home, there's a patch for you. Anybody else? Anybody else want to tell me things in which ways in which I can make this better? I'll give you a, I'll give you a, Fake committer ID in the in the in the commit entry. No. Cool. I think that's it. Thank thank you.